about your it. your your journey your journey to freedom to ownership why why did you know that that was important uh at a young age as people are chasing checks you've always understood that there was something uh, th- the checks were important but checks at any cost were never good why did you know that well you know my life before you know being a professional entrepreneur at a legal level you know i was a boss and I've always had the ability to flip, to control my own destiny, you know. So when someone that doesn't own anything would try to control my destiny because someone or another company or a fund gave them the power to do so, I wouldn't give them that power. I would never give a nerd my power, you know. So if I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to act a certain way and command a certain respect in another world, I'm coming through demanding even more respect because the world I came from, the recourse of disrespect was death or jail. The recourse of not playing by the rules was death or jail. And coming out of that game, playing with guys that don't play like that, you know, it was just pretty easy. It didn't seem natural to let a nerd tell me what to do. When you say nerd, what's what's the definition of that? Someone that doesn't fight for what they love, someone that's selfish, someone that pretends that there's something they're not, someone that exploits a culture, Someone that acts like a big like a big shot in our culture is not a big shot in their own. Someone that empowers negative stuff within our culture, that's a nerd, a coward. You know, those are nerds. People that pretend they're cooler than they are that really aren't about that action. That's a nerd. That definition, the, those those characteristics seem to be prevalent in hip hop, in recent hip hop, not not original hip hop, not beginnings hip hop, but let's say nineties, two thousands hip hop. Well, when money, when it became profitable, you know, the thing about urban culture is everybody wants it and they try to control the narrative that they should own it and distribute it back to us. And that just never made logical sense to me. You know, I've always been the plug, so I can't ever, I just can't pass that over. And I never understood why us as strong people who would be easy, like real quick to fight each other fearlessly would never fight them. So that's another reason why I started calling white people out by name because nobody else in my culture, at least in my business would do that. And I didn't understand why, but they were just so quick to fight me over nothing. So I know we're programmed to fight each other and, and, and instead of our oppressor. And I know our oppressor are the ones that have the DNA of that programming. So knowing it, I'm not going to become a victim of it. I'm going to reverse the narrative. My energy is always stronger than your, yours. Love is always stronger than hate. Just love has to know it. Why is it that that's not prevalent? You know, as you as you're talking, I'm thinking about how many people have sold themselves, sold out the culture, sold themselves cheaply, you know, and we sit here right now. And I've I've been talking about us having all of the things that we need to to win, like it's inherent in us if we just wake up and go, oh, okay, we don't need anything. Okay, we got all of the skills and the talents and the work ethic and the work, period. Why isn't that the, you know, and, it, and it's easy to talk about indoctrination, right? It's easy to talk about, well, 400 years they've been telling us this story. No, no, the thing is, the day you're born, you're already calling or thinking that you're number two by calling the name Jesus out when that's the white man's European translation of it. The translation is Yahshua, and it all happened in Africa. So the minute we're born, we see a white Jesus and we're programmed to believe that white ice is colder and that we need that for validation. And that's called programming. If the second you're born, you're told that your whole life, your challenge is to break the programming based on logic. That's all. This is all programming. The television, the things that are presented to us, it's a pattern. And the reason why, it's, like even look at the school system. You're programmed to believe that you're supposed to, have to, to, to give your children away to a stranger, someone that's probably hasn't done. I know none of the, my, my kids' teachers have done anything there what I've done. And someone that's not rich to teach you how to be rich, you have to sit behind a desk during the day when the sun is out and program yourself that you're not successful unless you pay again to go to another school that doesn't teach you anything about really how to survive in the real world other than to have a job. And then when you get out of that, you get debt for it, and you have to work that debt off. Basically, you're always in a position of distress you're always backpedaling and you're always hustling to pay off something that didn't help you in the first place. And now you're an adult sitting behind the desk. And the only time you see your children is at night when you tie it. The only time they see you is when you tie it. The education that's taught to us is like, yo, unless you have a nine to five, 
you unless you if you have a nine to five, unless you become an athlete, you will never break the social class. And then they provide that distraction for you. No one is lotto. So and they don't teach you how to, to vote. They don't teach you how to pass a law. They don't teach you how to farm. They don't teach you how to be an entrepreneur. They don't teach you how to pay taxes. They don't teach you any of the fundamentals that you need to be an independent and own anything. So basically, you're programmed into thinking being a slave is normal, and then you wonder why 99% of the world has to take pills because they're depressed. Because you're hustling for a dream that does not exist. That's called programming. So we're also programmed to think that the only person or the only people that can take us out of a social class is another culture, and that we just need to protect them like they're the plug. Even though they're physically weaker, they cannot dance, they cannot do anything we can do better at all. But still, and yet, they control the narrative. That's because brain has to control muscle. We have to realize we're muscle and brain. And that's a good strategy. I'm not mad at them doing it that way. But now that you're aware, you have to take accountability. Make yourself uncomfortable and understand the break of pattern means you do something different. You have to be uncomfortable to be great. And the only thing that will make you great is if your children don't have the same problems as you. That's the only thing that can make me think you're great. The only way you're great is if you're hustling for a bigger cause, love, so other people don't have to struggle. And understand that anything that's happened to you is so no one else you love has to go through it. But if you don't learn from it, then it's all in vain. But relatively speaking, you know, this mentality, it hasn't been so long. Because, you know, you look at the Great Wall of China, that took 2,000 years to build a wall by slaves for enemies that don't really exist that never came. That's 20 generations of programming. Programming is the way you control people. But now, as human beings that evolved, we're aware of the programming in this generation is not having it. And I've been setting that blueprint, leading by example, for the last three decades, period. Since I'm 20, I'm pushing 50. Same message, but the, the way people are receiving it is now different. So, yeah, on a therapeutic level, unless you recognize your trauma, you don't know your problems. But the trauma of racism and the trauma of thinking that you have to compromise to get out of a social class to take care of your family, and you don't recognize it, you can't fix it. The trauma of seeing a bullet go in. Like, I remember as a 16-year-old being used to seeing people get shot. So see somebody get his head twisted off and go to school like nothing happened. Now, in the moment, I didn't recognize that as trauma, but that's trauma. So we also have to recognize we need some healing and be strong enough to take care of the things that make us weak, you know? So, yeah, sometimes I talk. Some people get it because they have a general mentality. Some people don't because they have a soldier mentality. You know, master speaks a different language than slave. You understand? Fear speaks a different language than courage. But if you notice, the only reason why people don't do something is because of fear. And fear has always been implemented as a tool for you not to be free. So the thing you have to understand is if you have no fear, because we all going to die, it's a matter of time. It's all part of the game. But in between that time you die, you got to live life to the fullest with no fear, especially fear of winning, fear of investing in yourself. Because you can't be fear of being broke. You already broke. Dame Dash is in the building, y'all. 866-801-8255. Your biggest disappointment. I know for me, uh, it's trying to help people or give people information and then they don't follow up or they, you know, betray you. That's the hardest thing to swallow. But, you know, I've learned, I'm learning to, to deal with that too. What, what's your well, biggest what you disappointment? What you have to look at it is I have no real disappointments because of where my life is today. You know, I wish people could evolve faster, but if I give them information and they don't take it, I've done my job. Karmically, I'm good, and now I don't get the fuck away from you because I ain't going to catch the buckshot of your cum. So mm. what you got to learn is to detach. When people ain't ready, don't judge them. Don't, because why would you do something wrong when you could do something right? It must be because you're scared. But the thing is, what you're scared of, I don't care. Unless we family, unless I really love you, you're in my rear view. You know, I'm, I don't have so much faith in people to do the right thing. I actually expect them to do the wrong thing, but I've been in business 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. You know what I mean? I've been hustling since I'm 16. And in every business, it brings out a really different animal in people where they get into the self-preservation mode. In different countries, 
it's an honorable thing to rob your friend if he lets you. You know, it just depends on the environment you're you're born into. So if you're born into an environment where you're taught to lie, and then you come across someone that's born into an environment that's taught to tell the truth, the way y'all deal with things fundamentally will be different. The things that bother you will not bother that person. So when someone robs you and you're bothered, they're not even bothered. So why dumb yourself down and let their energy take over yours? My energy always takes over your energy. I stay happy or I punch you in your mouth. <laughs> and then I'm happy. Then I'm happy. Uh, the <laughs> impact, um, you talk about hustling since you were 15. You lost your mom around that time to an asthma attack. What impact, how did that shift or change your, your, your vision or your focus? It made me fearless. That was my worst nightmare. And I dealt with it, and I was all right. So from then on, I was a beast and an animal. I'm not scared of nothing because at the end of the day, I was like, the worst that could happen is I see my mom. So it didn't bother me. I became really more of an animal when the leader died because savagely I can survive. I can adjust and still be happy. I know I can deal with anything, and I have, and I also know the reason why things happen to me so I can teach others how to deal with it that aren't as strong as me. But, you know, you're not a warrior unless you go through a fight. So I've been through a lot, and that's why I'm confident in what I say, because it's based on natural experience and things I've done. So when you face your fears when you're young, and when you deal with things that you that really hurt when you're young, you tend to appreciate life. So unless somebody's dying or sick or going to jail, I'm usually not scared or I don't feel away because anything that's wrong could be made right as long as I'm breathing. But as long as I have health, I appreciate every second because that's real and love. That's the wealth. None of this other shit really matters. 